Good morning and welcome back to Project Seawolf. It is the day after the epoxy apocalypse episode. My hands still smell like epoxy. Here we are back at the house. This is Sarah's parents' house, so it's not really my house. But um, we got the davits, the rudder, even the dinghies here, which is coming down to Olympia so I can sail it in Olympia. That'll be fun, for especially with the kiddos. Teaching the kiddos to sail on a dinghy. Maybe sign them up for lasers later. Um, yeah, this shed is full of all the stuff that I've been taking off the boat. So all the wood trim. Got the new uh, bobstay terminal. Got uh, sheets of aluminum, stainless, bronze. This is full of bronze bars that'll be the uh, chain plates in the future. Uh, got sails and bags there sail um yeah guitar that i used to keep on my boat um the cushions used to all be up there but today we are going to be uh cleaning the cushions that go in the seti so these ones i believe are the only ones that go in the seti the ones up there are the ones in the quarter berths so these are the ones hopefully steam clean them and get them to the boat today Oh, and because a lot of you haven't seen the motor, because a lot of you have subscribed after I got the motor, uh, here's the motor. <laughs> it is protected um, with the cover. Uh, but yeah, it's a big QT 2.0 um, from Electric Yacht, specifically programmed and designed for my boat. So that'll go on sometime soon. All right, let's see how this looks. <sighs> Show the baby bump. Show the baby bump? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How many are in there? Two. Oh my goodness. Frickin' frack. Yeah. They're head to tail right now. One, two, and one, two. <laughs> oh my goodness. Are those pockets? No, no pockies. Oh, they're just... I wish I had pockets, but no. Baby bump. Very nice. Slowly turning into a sphere over here. All right, we're back on board. And let's see how the epoxy did overnight. Uh, it smells. Is it? Oh, yep, it's rock hard. And, uh, and the wall stayed up, thank goodness. So I guess I just, I'm gonna inject another bit there today. And along the sides. Yep, cool. Nice. Takes 72 hours to cure, but it's rock hard now, so uh, that's good to know. Yeah, I'm gonna be working from here on my laptop at my ecology job for the next two days, so I'd really like to have a nice place to sit. So, hence why we got the cushions all figured out and uh, why we're um, making this more livable. And on the plus side, I'll also be able to sleep here if I want, once these are put together. So this is this is Captain Topher's um, old boat, Wandering Dolphin. Uh, he took this thing around the Pacific and a lot in the Caribbean and the East Coast. Um, I'm here with the new owners, and uh, we're gonna check it out. It's a custom custom 47, something like that. Uh, but uh, we haven't. Nobody's been up here for a long time. <laughs> Interesting. So none of the none of the deck is flat. It's all rounded. Um, before they got here, there was a bit of a wreck, and uh, another boat hit this boat and bent this pulpit really far off to the side and did some crack damage. Um, looks like the force stays off. Don't know if that's. Yeah, it looks intentional. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, Topher raised a family on here. Amazing. All right, Cat and Topher forgot to give us the key, so 
not today, but maybe maybe in the future. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. All right, we're back on board, and I'm just gonna get right into it and start doing the um, other walls of the storage locker in here, and uh, get those in because I think this uh, this bottom one is going to stay in. So I'm gonna get that wall and that wall and then mix up a big batch of thickened epoxy to go all the way around in here and uh, seal it up nice and then um, I'll have to look up if I need that to cure before I can tab it in or what but eventually it'll get tabbed in okay so I've got this in here um, thinking about making a little piece that just kind of closes that cap because I was really bad at measuring. <laughs> uh, the trades people are going to be after me. And then I'm trimming this to fit in here nice. Um, still this corner down here. Still giving me some trouble. Right here. So yeah, those folks that came by earlier were Richard. Uh, it was Richard and uh, yeah, he's taken on Wandering Dolphin and uh, they're going to be in this yard a lot more so maybe you'll see more of them. That'll be fun. They've got kids and they, they, they met uh, Sailing Mig through sailing with kids so I mean I could definitely use some tips. <laughs> Uh, to see how, well, more importantly, how I can convince the wife to sail more. This is pretty solid here. That's uh, that's awesome. It feels awesome. Yeah. These little tabs up here. So yeah, if any of you old salts out there have any um, pointers for sailing with the Admiral, let me know. That looks pretty good. Just need to push him to the very end. So yeah, a little strip there, a little strip there. Okay, let's try this again uh, and hopefully not mess it up this time or make it super messy. Uh, I mean, I guess I didn't really mess it up because it worked, but um, it definitely could have been better. <laughs> and uh, done more elegantly. Um, so I think, uh, I think we're gonna mix up uh, twice as much today because uh, we've got twice as much area to cover. So let's go with four ounces and then it's a one to one so then we'll end up with eight ounces of thickened epoxy. Okay that's eight ounces. Oh. I forgot to pour it slowly to prevent bubbles, but I mean the big bubbles are coming up to the surface and popping, so Yeah, so let's mix that a bit so You got to mix it mix up the uh, Hardener and the epoxy before you add the thickener If you want to see the mess I made last time go check out the last video Still reeling from that my hands were sticky all night and I could smell it all night. It was pretty not great. But, you know, this is why I'm doing this on something that's not weight bearing or structural. Really just kind of walls in a storage compartment. So, yeah, before I move on to the more important areas, I want to get this whole epoxy thing down pat. Okay, here's the thickener. We're using 404, which is not sandable or anything. It just dries rock hard and smooth. Seemed to take a lot last time, so I just I'm just gonna start with a lot. And yeah, make sure you're wearing a mask for this stuff because it just it's just flying everywhere. We're just looking for glop. Something we can glop on, like peanut butter. 
I mean, before it gets too hard and too mixed up, I might want to transfer it to the baggie first. Because I really did like the baggie, and I think the baggie would work better than the syringe. I think the syringe is more for, like, small holes in the deck. I think for this kind of area where it's kind of just big gaps that I'm filling, perhaps the, the baggie as the syringe itself would be better. Okay, let's transfer it to the baggie while it still pours. Because the, the issue that I had last time was it did not pour well. And if I need to add more thickener in the baggie, I can. Sweet! I think if I had a team doing this, I would just have them prepare baggies of... of this stuff. Okay, that, that was pretty clean. It's very good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip off the corner of the baggie and uh, use it as a, as a cake, uh, a frosting shooter, whatever. Let's see if this thickens up by squeezing the baggie. Maybe I should have waited, yeah, I should have definitely mixed in more thickener before I put it in here. Hey, let's see how this works. I don't know, I've never seen anybody do this, so let's see if it works. It's already a lost cause for bubbles, I think, so. Oh yeah, that's definitely making it less runny already. Oop, and the bag is warming up. That's fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, the bag is warm. Nice. It's a little bit harder to judge the viscosity in the bag than it is in, in here, because here you can definitely tell when you're scooping it up. Here I can't really tell. It is still kind of runny, pouring, so maybe it just needs a few more minutes of cooking. Warm, thick bag of thickened epoxy. I'm going to cut off the tip and see how it flows. Okay, the tip has been cut off. And uh, yep. A little bit too runny. Shoot. <laughs> it's a lot of bit runny, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, this is probably the messiest uh, epoxy job you'll ever see. Hopefully. painting major would be able to, like me, would be able to uh, manage this goop better. Good.
Nope, definitely should have waited for it to thicken up more. I mean, every time I push it back into the place I want it to go, it doesn't go as far as it did before. So that's, that's good. At least I can try to get it to dry smooth. <laughs> I'm just playing this with this huge gap in this corner. As time goes on, it gets thicker and thicker. And so I don't have to like keep on pushing it back up in as much. But man. Well, I mean, on the plus side, it's kind of the mess back here is uh, sealing in the structure here because it's drizzling into the the blocks that are holding up the floor back here. But <laughs> it is a lot of uh, of material that I'm wasting. Well, at least when I go back and I do the top part, these will be very much so cemented in. <laughs> like I'm seeing enough of what epoxy can do that it makes me happy and that I know like I can do some cool stuff with it in the future. But it's really not my friend right now. <laughs> yeah, don't let me near your boat, that's for sure. <laughs> would have probably worked is if I used masking tape on the other side. Actually, I've got a little piece of Divini foam that I cut off earlier that I saved just in case I wanted like a little triangle or something and uh, there's plenty of epoxy down here to soak it and then I'll just, I'll just wedge it in there. Perfect. That'll be great. Literally the entire corner of this storage area is going to be rock solid and everything else is going to be like, eh. Because <laughs> it's just going to be 100% thick and epoxy. <laughs> I... Okay, so now I guess I'll do some acetone cleanup. I don't want to be as sticky as I was last time. Okay, for as, as bad as I thought it was going to be, it, it's not super bad. I mean, the corners are kind of pieced together with various bits of foam, but the rest, like the big long lines, are pretty good. Um, pretty messy, but... I mean, I'm not looking at a professional job, <laughs> but uh, yet, might learn it still. I don't know. All this epoxy work that's going to have to happen to make these these work and um, functional storage areas, uh, I might end up really getting good at it. But uh, today and yesterday not good examples. Okay, I think I've stopped the bleeding. This stuff is dry already, but there's stuff seeping out of this corner for a long time. Uh, but I think it is dry enough for it. We'll stay now. Um, while Richard was on board, I asked him like what I should get prepared for for taking off the mask, because he's done a lot of sailing. Um, and so uh, we took a look at the mast. Of course, we're gonna wanna get all these ropes out of the way um, and take the the boom vang off. Um, there might be a hole behind the boom vang where I can see what's going on inside the mast, but it looks like the mast just slots onto this. There, there's a lip inside and it just slots onto there. Uh, I'm gonna cut those wires. None of these wires work anyway, and so 
I'm gonna totally rewire the uh, mast. Um, so, yeah, I won't be missing out on too much with that. Um, yeah, there's just so many tangled up lines uh, and they all need to get, um, yeah. So I guess I'll just start taking lines off. So just in case there isn't a hole behind here, or if there is, then it might help figure out what's going on with the mast. Uh, I'm gonna take the uh, boom vang attachment off and see if that leads any clues as to how the mast is attached, like the actual bottom part, if it is at all. It might just slot on and is held up by the stays. I don't know yet. Okay, just go about the last one. Uh, one of the bolts, one of the bolts broke off. It's just kind of sitting in there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that out. Or <laughs> if it's, nope, it didn't get in the way. And there's no hole. Great, so I did all that, just kind of see what's going on underneath. So that looks kind of interesting. Is that a lot of corrosion? I have no idea. Is this stainless and this aluminum? Oh my goodness. That's kind of spooky. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's not sealant. I think it's corrosion. So this thing, if anybody can tell me what this is, let me know. I think it's just a place to put this, but who knows what this is? I have no idea. It doesn't like really fit anything really except for the rail, maybe? I don't know, it's pretty heavy duty. Maybe it's for an old windlass that isn't on here or wasn't on here when I got it. Um, interesting, but yeah. I think it's coming off because I have no idea what it is unless somebody can tell me what it does. And then I've got to make sure the wires can come apart with uh, so that when they pull the mast it can just come off. Okay, so the mast sits on this beam here. I don't know if the beam is metal or wood or what. No bumps, really. Don't think. Hmm. Don't think there is a way to get in there. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if there's going to be anything else securing the mast other than what's already there just a lip and that uh, the metal under it with the screws is just a, a boot. Just gonna make this uh, place a little bit more livable. I brought cushions so all of this will be cushioned out. I also brought this door back but uh, I realized I don't have the screws. The screws are probably in the garage so I'll come back tomorrow with the screws and maybe screw this door back on. It'll be nice to have that door on so that I can keep fiberglass isolated to one area or the other and not get a ton of fiberglass everywhere. Exciting times. Exciting getting the mast ready to be taken off. I'm realizing that it's really gonna open up a lot of opportunities and allow me to clean up a lot of things around here. Yeah, the bowsprit being the one, one of them. And of course the chain plates. Finally open up these and see what they look like inside. I don't have very high hopes <laughs> for uh, what they're gonna look like. Let's see, there's another one there. So it would go be inside here. So it's still accessible. Um, okay, I see. I see where it is. It's it's right there. So it would line up around here. So I can still get the external chain plate in pretty good um, by working inside this little cabinet. I say little, it's not little. It's a wardrobe. It's a whole wardrobe. Easy enough to get in here. 
Oh man, yeah, the rust coming out of that is just crazy. Exciting, exciting stuff. I think we had a pretty productive day. The mast is ready to be taken off tomorrow morning. I can finally sit comfortably on my boat. Oh my goodness, oh, so good. I didn't bring these two cushions, so I'm gonna have to clean those and bring them. Yeah, I haven't showered in two days, so <laughs> I think it's a good time to uh, take a break, shower, and then uh, be back bright and early in the morning to take down the mast. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. Um, if you really like the video, maybe check out the Patreon, and uh, I'll send you one of these shirts if you uh, become a patron at $5 and up. Um, I've delivered them to Germany, California, Illinois, all over. It's been a great process. I've really enjoyed it. So I would love to send out more shirts. Check out the Patreon in the description. It's at the top, top link. Yeah, we're making some big moves. Uh, summer is in full swing. So uh, it's kind of what I predicted is when the weather dried out, we were able to get at some of these projects that I've been putting off. Glad you stuck around at the end of the video. And uh, I'll see you next, next week.